Hey everybody, thank you for coming back. This is the second video. If you missed the first one, click the link to go back and see the beginning of modeling up this box that actually is an assembly that also has a lid that goes on top of it. But let's jump back right into it and get this box modeled up. So again, either sketch on a face or plane. So I'm gonna sketch right here on this face. So I'm gonna just right click on it. I'm going to select create sketch. It will automatically go normal to, right? And now I can start sketching on this face here. Now I'm going to do a circle and I'm going to not use the S key. I'm going to jump right to the circle and that's the C for circle. So I'm going to hit the C key and you will see next to my cursor, I kind of like get a circle. And I'm just going to sketch my circle somewhere around here. Most of the times when I'm sketching things, I'm really not trying to be accurate in the beginning. Actually, sometimes I kind of like just make it a little bit bigger just for the heck of it. And now we can start um, working with uh, the sketch. So you will see right now that our sketch is blue. It's not black. And that's because this sketch here is not defined. First of all, the diameter is kind of like all over the place. And also the location of it is not tied down. So we're going to do that with some dimensions. To turn on the dimension tool, we're going to click D for dimension. And I'm going to go ahead and just make the diameter first. So I'm going to select circle like that. And I am going to make the diameter 28. Hit enter. And now I got to place uh, the, the, the circle. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select this edge right here. And I'm going to select the center of our circle like that. I'm going to make this 24. And then I'm going to do from the bottom here up to the center. And I'm going to make this 16, just like that. Now you will see that our circle is black, what means that it's ready to be extruded out. It's fully defined. It cannot move. The diameter is locked down and the location is locked down. So again, I'm going to hit the Q for the press pull and I'm going to select that circle and then I'm going to select the arrow and I can just pull it out here and I am going to make this one 18. Hit enter. Now there's a hole going through this one so I'm going to go ahead here on that face and right click, create a new sketch. And I'm just going to create another circle. But I can actually pick up the center of the circle. Look, if I hover over the center, you will actually see right there. You see how my, my crosshair actually turns into a little red dot, a little blue dot. That means that I'm actually catching that center. So I'm going to click there. And I'm going to make the hole here 22. And you will now see that that turns black. So that means that now that is fully defined. So I'm going to again hit the Q for press pull. And then I'm going to click on that again. And again, if I pull out, it will add material. If I pull through, then it will cut. Now you might be tempted to just make sure that you pull through the wall here and say that is good. But it actually is a little bit of bad practice because if you just do it like this and you add all different kinds of features later on, if you're changing things, if you, for example, decide to make this wall thickness thicker, you might suddenly see your hole don't always go through. So I'm going to go over to the menu over here and I am going to select two object again and select that back face. So now I'm always making sure that that cut will go from here to that back face. And if we should change that wall thickness, I'm always, I'm, I know that it will stay to that back face. Hit OK. And we have now just placed that dimension or that boss right there. We are going to do the second boss. So we're going to do that over on this back face here. So I'm going to right click on that face, hit create a sketch. And I actually know that I want that hole to be, or that boss with a hole through it, right in the center 
of the plot here. So I'm actually going to create what is called a construction line. A construction line is a line that the software will not use other than for references. So I'm going to hit L on my keyboard for line. And then I'm going to pick up the origin you can see down here. I'm going to click once. And then I'm going to move up to the top. Now you will feel the line will kind of lock at that vertical moment here. So I'm just going to place it right out so it's vertical here. And you'll see it's ready to sketch another line. Just to get out of that, I'm just going to hit escape on my keyboard once. Now you will see that there's a couple of relations that have been added to it. So you will see here that there is a coincident over here. And then we actually also have uh, the um, 90 degree perpendicular right over here. Now to make this a construction line or reference line, I'm going to select the line and hit X on my keyboard. You could also select over here between normal and construction, but I'm going to hit the X key and you will see that now it becomes a construction line. So this line again is just here for reference. Now I'm going to select the C for circle again. And I'm going to, if I hover over, you will see again that I kind of get a little icon here that is a X. So here's my, my black um, crosshair. And as soon as I hit the line, I get that X. That means that the circle is not going to be attached to this line. Now, if I'm hovering down, you'll actually see that I also get a little triangle right at the intersection. So that means that not only will it attach the circle to the line, but actually to this intersection between the horizontal line and the dotted line. But you will actually also see that it will hit the midpoint of the line right there. So just be aware of it kind of matters. I'm just going to select somewhere so I'm not the midpoint, but I am to the reference line. Click once and just again make the line, make the circle uh, a little big here. And you will see that I can type in the, the diameter, but again, it's 28. So I'm going to type that in, hit enter. Now, you see how the circle is still blue because though that we define the diameter, we have we and we define it to the line, it can still move up and down this line. So we have to add one more dimension. So to do the dimension tool, I'm going to hit D and I'm going to place one from here to the edge, the center here, and that's going to be 16 just like we had before. Now that is black. What means that is fully defined, what means that we can extrude out. So we're going to hit the Q again. Now you will actually see here that the software is smart enough to know that there are some intersection lines. So we're going to make sure we select all of them here. So we're going to select that piece, that piece, and that little half moon piece there. So we get uh, the entire circle out there. Now again, this is 16 going... 18 going out like that but you will actually see that we have a little bit of an issue because this diameter went past uh, our flat surface so if you're looking here and zooming in you can actually see there's a little bit of space now I'm gonna go back to that specific extrusion right here and right click on it and select edit feature. So before we use distance out, and we've also used to object, but we can actually also do uh, not just one side, but actually two sides. So there was the 18 we went out, but then there's actually also another one that goes back. So now we're actually going back inside. So we can go in two directions. And now I'm going to use, on for that one, I'm actually going to use to object to that face there. And then I can select chain faces. And you will see that it actually creates that little piece we need right there. So now it is fully submerged on each side with that radius. So now we're going to go ahead and create our hole through the center. So I'm going to click on the, on the face again, right click and say create sketch. 
Again, C for circle. And again, I'm going to find that center of that previous circle. See right there? Click on that. And then I can type in my 22 in diameter, just like that. The sketch is black, so now we can fully define it. Oh, it's fully defined, so now we can hit the Q to press pull again. Again, I'm going to select that face and cut through here. And again, I'm going to go and select not distance, but just like on the other one, to object and just select this back face here. And I can't actually not tell you how the software is smart enough to know to actually cut past the radius, but it does. Just like that, we got what we want. So we have two more things to finish up this part. We have kind of like these two lip areas here with the two holes where we are screwing uh, the screws into. So let's do those. So I am gonna go ahead here and right click up on this face up here and start a sketch here. Create sketch and it's gonna go normal to that face. Now again, I know that this is kind of like a circle on the top here. So I'm gonna create another construction line. So I'm gonna click line. L for line and select this origin and just move out here. Make sure that I snap to the horizontal here. And to exit out of the line command, I'm gonna hit escape on my keyboard. To make this an exit construction line, I'm gonna select it, hit X for construction line. There we go. And now I'm just gonna do a circle and tie that in. So I'm gonna do C for circle. And again, I'm just gonna sketch something out here that is kind of close. Now, uh, this one here is going to be a 10 millimeter circle. So I'll type that in. And uh, then I have a dimension. So I'm gonna hit D for dimension from this bag edge to this center here. And that is going to be six. Now there is gonna be some radius here, but I'm gonna add those later on. So I'm gonna go ahead here and extrude this one out right now, because it is black, it is full defined. So I'm gonna hit Q, again, press pull. And you will see, if I go over here to the top, that I actually don't have to select the whole circle because it knows that line is breaking it. So this is really all I want. I'm gonna sketch that down here. And uh, I'm going to let that go 21 millimeters, well, minus 21 millimeters, like that. Hit enter. And now we have that portion created there. Now, here's an interesting thing. I want the same thing on the other side here, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use something called a mirror function because I have my planes down here and I can mirror over these planes. So to get to the mirror command, I am just using that S key again and search mirror. And you will see that it shows right up here. So I'm gonna select that. And the first thing is looking for is the object. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select down in my feature tree that object right there. The next thing you wanna know is what you're gonna select. And what I'm selecting is actually a Features, so you will see there's faces, there's bodies, there's features, that's what we are selecting here. So I'm gonna select that again. And then what are you gonna mirror above, about? And I'm gonna mirror about this one plane down here. So select that, and we kinda of like get a shadow repetition here. I'm gonna hit okay. And now you will see that we just added this one over here. That was easy, right? That saved me from drawing that whole thing up again. There is one thing though. You will see that that one was too long. It's actually going through that hole that we cut. Well, here's a very nice thing about parametric modeling. This tree down here shows how everything is modeled up. So what I can actually do, if I drag back, you can actually see each step. Here we had the box. Then we created the cutout in the center. We added a couple of fillets. We extruded that boss out. We made a hole through it. Then we extruded that boss out. Then we cut a hole through that. And that actually makes me think, well, wait a minute. 
what if this cutout comes after our mirror function? So we actually were cutting this out. Yes, we can actually do that. If I take this, this cutout and I literally just hold down my left mouse button and I drag it over in front of the mirror, now you will see that we cut that out. So here is another example of the power of parametric modeling. Just by moving that feature at the end, we're actually cutting with it. So now when you know that, you can think about that it matters in what orders you're creating things. You can actually kind of like switch things around so it fits within there. Really powerful stuff. With this, we are ready to do uh, a couple more things. Let's add the fillers to the sides here. So I'm going to hit S and hit that fill it command right there. And I'm just going to select this and I'm going to select that one on the upper side. Again, you don't have to turn around. You can actually just select them right through there. I'm going to make this one two millimeters. And then I have to uh, create the holes for the screws. So let's just do that. So I'm actually going to go ahead and open a new sketch, right click, create a new sketch. And I am going to create a circle right in the center. So that is C for circle. Again, I'm going to pick up that center point right there. And this circle here is going to be, well, it's going to be, it probably is a little bit smaller because the screw is actually cutting into this. But I'm going to go ahead and make it four millimeters in diameter like that. And I'm going to go ahead and create one on the other side at the same time while I'm over here. Click on that, again, make that fall, just like that. And then I'm gonna extrude uh, those down. So I'm gonna hit Q and just select those two holes. And I'm just gonna cut them down minus eight millimeters, just like that. Now, on our original part, I actually don't think that they put any threads in here because the metal screw would actually just cut into the hole. But I want to show you that we can actually add threads to holes. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to select both holes. I'm going to select this hole. I'm going to hold down control to multi-select and select the other hole. Then I'm going to hit, hit the S key for the search box and type in thread. And you will see that the thread command comes up right here. Now in here, it will automatically try to figure out, depending on the size, what type hole you want. But of course, as you can see here, there's drop downs, you can change all this. Another thing I want to show you that in most CAD systems, um, the thread is just displayed by a literally just a JPEG. So and we have the same option here, if we uncheck model. So let me just hit OK. So that now you will see that we have that it's not model, it's just kind of like an image. If I go back in and edit that uh, feature by right clicking and I click modeled and hit OK, you will actually see that now it's modeled in there. That is actually fine to do in Fusion 360. I know if you're coming from another system, <laughs> then you don't do this, um, but you can actually do that inside of Fusion. So that's just a little, little added caveat. All right, so we wrapped up this part here. I hope that you start feeling more comfortable with this whole thing about sketching and relationships and also some of these cool parametric functions that is in the software. We're almost done. We really just need to model up the lid, add a couple of screws, and then we're at the finish line. So I'll give you five minutes. Go and get some popcorn so you are ready for the thrill of the last video.